Now, many of the islands here are on the forefront of climate change. As the seas become warmer, bleached corals on reefs are a stark warning of other looming environmental problems. Carmen Roberts has been taking a look at what communities in Grenada and Tobago are doing to try to save their ecosystems. This is footage from 2005, when many coral reefs around the Caribbean started to turn a shocking white. It's known as coral bleaching, a byproduct of increasing water temperatures and a chilling reminder that climate change is no longer a distant threat, but an environmental reality. Environmentalists say that around 30% of the world's coral reefs have already been destroyed. And while some experts predict that these reefs will have totally disappeared within the next 100 years. Many people, tourists included, and even some in the tourism industry, are somewhat apathetic about global warming. Many claim that there's nothing we can do to stop it. Well, that's not entirely true. Bleaching in itself is not necessarily fatal. And when corals are bleached, they, they can regain their, their colour but they're very stressed, they're very weakened. They can only operate on a, a fraction of their energy needs. So they're vulnerable to diseases, they're vulnerable to sediment, they're vulnerable to other species like algae, plants, growing over them. So it's during that sensitive period that you really have to really maximise the, the, the other parameters as much as possible, keep the water clean, as I said, keep the reef healthy. We spent the day out on the water with the Buku Reef Trust team in Tobago, a non-profit organisation that's looking at local solutions to this global problem. The, the reef goes all the way around like a big horseshoe, and uh, we're now going over the, the crest into the lagoon area to the harbour inside. They've been educating reef tour operators about environmental practices, installed demarcation buoys so ships don't drop and drag their anchors on the corals, as well as produced an in-flight video informing tourists how they can better protect this precious marine ecosystem. It's small steps like this that help keep a healthy reef, making it more resilient and hopefully less prone to coral bleaching. Next year, tourists will get a chance to help preserve this fragile ecosystem. Buku Reef Trust has joined forces with the UK-based non-profit organisation Coral Key Conservation, undertaking a three-year project to map the reef around Tobago. The Coral Key volunteers that are coming in are the hardcore end of eco-tourism on that spectrum. They are people that really want to do something different with their vacation time, whether it be just two weeks or three months. And these are people from all walks of life, minimum age 16 through to, was no maximum age. 76 plus plus is fine by us. What they all share in common is the willingness to, to donate their time and co-finance the project to come here and assist what is, must be, uh, a vital piece of work. There's no established um, fund for managing the reef, and we think that is extremely important to be established. We are working now with the Tobago House of Assembly on a committee called the Book Reef Management Park Committee, and this, this is one of the initiatives that we are considering, to have a fund set up that, that all the contributors and all the fees that go into that fund will be used precisely for managing and for conservation of this wonderful piece of paradise. But still, in paradise, there's unsafe tourism practices. Almost half the glass-bottom boats here offer reef walking. They even give out plastic shoes. It's NGOs like this that help spur on governments to act. We have some park rangers now. They're not sufficient, though. And the plan is to have a park manager with, uh, a, a, with staffing that supports um, conservation activities on the reef. Those are, those are being looked at now. And I would say in the very... Um, in the near future, we should have a, um, a good management team on that reef so that reef walking should be a, something of the past. They tend to be dome-shaped, OK? Then they get light all coming as the sun moves across. They get light from everywhere. Other islands in the Caribbean have been proactive on a smaller scale. 
dive operators in nearby Grenada have been educating their customers about marine biodiversity and protection. So, um, yeah, once we get out here, obviously we'll need to keep an eye on our own and bottom time, but um, you'll be able to see the slate. But Tobago is undoubtedly leading the way in the fight to help preserve the reefs, showing that efforts on a local level don't go unnoticed. So whether it be helping map a reef on holiday or making a conscious decision to book with a responsible tour operator, it goes to show that it's not too late to stop or at least curb the effects of global warming. And instead of being part of the problem, tourists can help find a solution. Carmen Roberts reporting there on climate change here in the Caribbean.